This espresso cup was printed from PLA. It stands up to boiling hot water, to scaldingly hot coffee, and it is totally dishwasher safe. That's all because I've printed this from ProPasta HTPLA and I've heat treated this. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I designed this espresso doppio cup in Fusion 360. I'm gonna show you how I printed and heat treated it. And then I'm gonna make some coffee for it, sponsored by Trade Coffee. Yeah, now we're ready to go. Before I even started designing the espresso cup itself, I just wanted to get a rough feeling for how large it needed to be. Of course, you've all held an espresso cup in your hand before and, and kind of know roughly how big it is, but I bet you would be hard pressed to actually put it into dimensions. So what I'm actually showing you here is the exact same process that I'm going to be using down the line to make sure an espresso topio actually fits in this cup. So I start out by creating a simple sketch using the revolve to create like a cup like feature, which we actually don't need in this case. Uh, and then also extruding the inner volume, basically what fits in that cup as a separate body. So I'm not using the join option here, but I'm selecting new body. So now we can go into the bodies on the left here, select our volume, our inner part, and select its properties. And Fusion 360 will show us exactly how much volume this body is taking up, which is the exact volume that our cup could hold until it's filled to the brim. After that, I just hop back into the sketch, play around with the dimensions a few times and uh, kind of make sure that it is large enough, just again, to get a rough sense of scale. Once I'm happy with the size, I use the dimension tool in the sketch to actually read out what I've stretched these dimensions to, and then we're ready to move on to designing the actual espresso cup itself. Since the cup I'm designing here is, you know, just like any tea, coffee, or espresso mug out there is going to be round, I'm sketching this to work with the revolve feature. So I'm only sketching out one half of the cross section, and that is then going to get revolved 360 degrees all the way around. For this, the most essential feature is going to be the center line. This is what that feature is going to spin around. Now, I wasn't really sure what I was going to do for design on this cup. Um, I didn't want to have it just plain and angular or rounded on the outside. I wanted to have some details, but I, I don't want to spend a ton of time, you know, making stuff look pretty. Uh, I'm an engineer after all. I'm all for functional stuff. Of course, you can spend as much time as you want on making things uh, look the way you want. But for me right now, I care mostly about this thing actually holding an espresso dobio and being a nice way to learn about the HTPLA properties and to kind of go through the entire tempering process and figure that out. Also, this is going to be a coffee cup that nobody else has. This is just going to be mine. Well, unless you actually download the model and print it too. So what I think would look nice is to have three facets on the outside. Um, I'm going to dimension them to be equal length, and then I'm going to use an arc section to align them. The arc on the outside also allows me to set how pronounced that faceted look is going to be. I can just change the radius of that arc, and it's going to make these sections more or less pointy on the outside. To find the center of that arc, I first go in and create some helper geometry that aligns with the perfect center with a perfect midpoint of the ideal geometry without that faceted look. Remember that you can always set construction lines like these that are not going to be used for actual geometry, but just help you construct the geometry itself to be those construction lines. Those are not going to be picked up for geometry in your sketches, so it makes it a bit easier to work. The hotkey to set a line to construction is X, but you can also do it to menus. Now, for the inside geometry, there are a ton of different options for creating it. Some of the ways you could do it is to either use the shell feature on the actual 3D geometry or to use offset inside the sketch. But since I didn't need the faceted look to be transferred perfectly to the inside uh, and rather was going for something a bit smoother, aka easier to clean, I just decided to sketch the inside geometry separately and to set some wall thicknesses manually. But yes, I hear you, you could do this all parametrically, and you could probably go about designing this thing in a whole different way, but since I'm not planning on this design to be adaptable, this is going to be mostly a one-off part for myself, uh, I'm fine with just leaving the dimensions in the sketch. And of course, you can always go into the sketch itself and change dimensions there. So next up, I go in here and actually create the inner volume and just check that I'm roughly in the right ballpark. And I'm not. This is 182 milliliters, which is, you know, coffee cup size. So I need to shrink the dimensions down quite a bit to make it an espresso sized cup. While adapting the geometry, I actually ended up messing up the sketch itself. So if we go into the sketch right here, you can see that right here, this dividing line between the inside volume and the outside shell of the cup opened up. 
It's kind of like in Paint if you use the bucket tool and just have that one pixel gap. It fills out the entirety of your painting and not just that one little bit that you wanted to have filled. It's the same problem here and all I had to do was to detach the end of the inner arc from our construction geometry and to actually attach it to the top surface of the cup. And now that I'm happy with the way this cup is proportioned, and I think it is rather well proportioned, it looks, it looks functional, it looks like an actual proper espresso cup, um, we can start moving on. So the next thing I wanted to add was to have some dishwasher drain channels on the underside. You know what these do on, on coffee cups, if you put them upside down in the dishwasher, it means that the underside, this little indented area right here, is not going to be filled with filthy dishwasher water. So these just let stuff drain out really easily. Now again, I'm not making the dimensions of these parametric or anything. I'm not even adding dimensions itself. I'm just snapping it to the grid in Fusion 360 here. Just because I'm, I'm not going to change these like two millimeters. That's the, the grid size and that is perfectly fine for this job. I don't see this ever needing to be changed. Next up, I add a few chamfers on the underside and a few fillets on the top. Just one large fillet on the inside of the espresso contact and area. Again, that is just to make it easier to clean and just some small radii up top. So in preparation of adding a handle to this cup, I wanted to rotate it 45 degrees so that the handle on the side doesn't cover up one of the drain channels on the bottom. Now for the handle itself, I wanted to base it off of the geometry we already had. So I wanted to base it off of this sketch that was already there. Now by default, when you create a new feature, a new 3D geometry from a sketch, that sketch gets used up or hidden. But you can always bring it back into view just by using that little light bulb right over here. And the nice thing about that is, if you now create a new sketch, you can base your existing geometry off of that sketch that you've already created before. So what I can do here is to grab the height of each of the facets of the cup itself, transfer it into the sketch and base my handle geometry on that same design language and on the exact same dimensions. I'm also straight up copying some of the bits of that previous sketch into this new sketch by using the project feature. I could draw up the exact same thing again, but by using project, I get the advantage that if I ever change anything in that first sketch, it also gets updated in the second sketch, in the new handle sketch, and is always going to match perfectly to what's already there. So the handle itself is just a very simple symmetric extrude. I'm re-enabling the fillets on the top edge and in the bottom of the cup and I'm adding a new bevel where the handle meets the rest of the cup. What? This? Yeah, that, that's the coffee cup we're working on. I mean, this old Tony isn't the only one who's figured out time travel. But I gotta say, this part actually turned out really nicely. I ended up making a saucer too. I mean, I've not always been a coffee drinker. Uh, in fact, I'm still a tea in the morning, coffee after lunch kind of guy. Um, just, you know, have your lunch, make a nice cup of coffee, just relax for a second and then get back to work. And it's easy to find just, you know, coffee, any coffee, right? But it's, it's kind of hard to find really good coffee. And I only discovered that there is such a thing as really good coffee after trying dozens of different ones. I think I've, I've talked about this before, but my dad and myself, we started going on, on bike tours every year and last year's tour was across the Alps. And that tour across the Alps, that was when I got to try so many different coffees, I actually found out what I liked. Now I know that not everyone can just go on a two week bike tour and, and you know try different coffees. And that's where today's sponsor comes in, Trade Coffee. Trade Coffee partner with 50 of the best roasters in the US and they have over 400 different coffees on their website. 400 in today's day and age doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a huge selection. And to help you find the style of coffee you like, they have a six question quiz on the website. It's kind of like an online dating service, just that all the coffees they have are real. They're gonna give you one perfect match and also a ton of options of coffees you, you probably also like. So I did that quiz, they matched me to an Intelligentsia Black Cat Classic Espresso. Uh, this is actually a coffee from Chicago. And I gotta say, and I'm not sponsored to say this, uh, but this is actually really good coffee. This might be my favorite coffee so far. It's got a nice, rich aroma, but it's got some, some depth to it. Supreme balance and the wonderful sweetness make this a classic. Yes, this is just good coffee. The good thing about Trade Coffee is they don't just have a warehouse full of coffees waiting to be shipped. No, uh, your coffee only gets roasted once you order it. So you get the freshest coffee there is and you can, you can definitely tell. 
and to help you get the coffee that is perfectly suited to your taste, uh, Trade Coffee is giving the first 100 people who click the link in the video description below and use offer code TOMS3D 50% off their first purchase. So take the quiz, find the perfect coffee for you and get 50% off your first order. Thanks, Trade. Actually, I'm noticing one thing. I put the trade word mark across the front here, so I'm gonna show you how to add that text in Fusion 360. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this text into the surface of the espresso cup. Now, that would be trivial if it was a flat surface. You could just use the linear push-pull extrude. But because this is essentially a slanted revolve surface, this thing is anything but flat. So of course we could cut all the way through, but you know, it, it, it needs to hold coffee. So what I like to do, and this basically works with any surface that you might want to say engrave text into, is I'll first create an offset surface in the model. So Fusion 360 has that option where you can create a new surface, so not a, a volumetric part, but just the skin, and inset that into the object however deep you want your text to be. I went with one millimeter, but you don't even have to go that deep. And we're then just going to use that surface for the limit of how deep you want to cut. Now, the next challenge with text is that fonts usually aren't optimized for CAD. They are meant to look good, but in many cases, they're just technically not suitable to be extruded like this. And in fact, with the font I chose to use here, that's exactly the case. I can use it in a sketch and it's gonna display correctly, but as soon as I try to create a feature from it, so a 3D geometry, Fusion 360 just throws an error and gives up. So to work around that, what we can do is we can use an external program to convert the font into a path. I use Adobe Illustrator here, but of course you can also use Inkscape. The important bit here is that when you select File, Save as SVG, you go with the Convert to Outline option. This converts the font into a path, and this is exactly what we need to import it into Fusion 360. So in Fusion 360, you can just say Insert, SVG, pick your file, and there you go. To get that engraving effect, I choose a starting point outside of the cup, then say Extend to Object. Here we select the surface we created before, which is inset by that one millimeter, and we choose the minimal solution so it doesn't go all the way to the cup and also tries to touch that second point where it would come into contact with that surface. And that's the espresso cup completed. I also made a very simple saucer in the same style. I'm printing the cup upright and it's been designed to have very easy overhangs, but on the very bottom I'm using support material just to make sure that bottom indent and the dishwasher grooves will print very cleanly and will be perfectly watertight. The saucer on the other hand, I printed standing on its side. With a large flat object like this and a very shallow overhang, you'd have the entire underside supported with support materials. So that wouldn't look very good once it's peeled away. The surface finish just wouldn't be all that good. So if you print it standing up on its side, only the very edge of the part is going to contact support material. And that is just super easy to clean up with a bit of sandpaper afterwards. Of course, now the only contact with the bed is gonna be the support material. So you do want the support material to be rather sturdy and you kind of want a lot of it. All right, off we go to the printers. So this actually came out really nicely, um, you know, that the surfaces are smooth. The bottom did curl up a bit because this was printed at 230 degrees Celsius and this is still a PLA, but you know, it feels good in the hand. The handle could be a bit bigger, but it's all right. I mean, it's just an espresso cup. It's not a coffee cup. Um, and if you look inside here, the Hilbert Curve infill actually looks super neat. Um, the bottom there has this uh, even texture to it but I'm still gonna sand it down with some 400 and 800 grit sandpaper on the inside, just where it's gonna touch the actual coffee. Now, of course, if you are worried about food contact with PLA, you can always take a polyurethane coating. There are special food safe ones out there uh, and just coat the entire inside or the entire cup with that. I'm not gonna worry about that too much. I'm gonna give it a good hot rinse before I actually start using this for coffee. And it's gonna go into the dishwasher after every use. But as I mentioned, there is that option of the polyurethane coating out there just to do it by the book, you know? All right, I've done a pass of 400, 800, and 1200 grit, 
And this is, yeah, this is way smoother. Next up, let's get this thing dried up and let's get it heat treated. The official baking instructions for HTPLA call for 110 degrees. Typically the recommendation for HTPLA for tempering is to print these parts solid, which I did not do. I wanted this cup to be somewhat insulating, so I did print it with infill. So I'm gonna have to see if it warps at all or if it deforms or shrinks. So I'm gonna go with a more careful setting. I'm gonna set this to about 100 degrees and I'm gonna go with convection. Yeah, now all that's left to do is to wait and to have these parts cure. I'm gonna set this thing to 30 minutes and we'll see how well these two parts do. Hold on a second. Let's wash that again. And again. If you look at the cup first, it actually goes into a shrink mode and grows at the same time, but it doesn't do it smoothly. It doesn't just go into a slimmer and taller state in, in, in one smooth motion, but it's doing this kind of wiggly move. And the same goes for the saucer, and that actually bends up and down quite a lot. I did notice that while I was just watching the tempering process, but wow, with this time lapse, it really stands out how much these parts warp. I think I should have probably gone with a slower heat cycle and not just dumped them into the hot oven, but actually slowly warmed them up. But that's the point where there's always more room for experimentation. Uh, I've got my Fleur thermal camera on my phone here, so let's give this a quick check and see how warm we actually are. 105 on the surface there. 98, 97, yeah, that is, that is looking perfect. So the saucer is already heated up, the cup is still taking up, yeah. The cup is still taking a second to, to actually get to temperature and, you know, just as usual, the camera just cut out because it's bouncing around on the connector. But yeah, this is, this is looking good. Let's keep going. And in those remaining 25 minutes, nothing really changed, nothing really happened. So I'm thinking the crystallization of these parts has already occurred in those first few minutes. So the oven says we're done. Let's give it another quick check. Ooh, 114. 111. Mmm. Oh, but it actually smells good. Warm PLA smells so nice. The one thing I can already say is even though these parts are, you know, hot, I mean, they're in the oven at 110, uh, they're not soft. These are hard. These are, you know, these don't bend like a, a PLA would. Yeah, you can see it's kind of flexy springy, but that's just because, yeah, it does get soft after a while. But overall, these have not melted, which means, you know, something worked. And of course, now with the Black Cat Classic Espresso, we have the Black Cup Classic for Espresso. Wow, this is, this is not getting soft at all. And it's also staying reasonably cool on the outside. Now, with these parts being successfully heat treated, I can say that they have become incredibly rigid. So this saucer, I can hardly bend by hand. I can barely feel any flexing in here. Um, they have also become very temperature resistant. Being able to rinse them with boiling water and not feeling any softening happening is fantastic. That means they're gonna stand up to boiling hot coffee, espresso, just fine. But also they're gonna stand up to the dishwasher just perfectly. Um, the one thing I did notice is that they did warp. HTP HTPLA 3 is not supposed to warp as much as the previous HTPLAs, but if we actually measure across the XY plane here, we're at 95 millimeters, and if you measure across Z, Z, we're at 102 millimeters. So this saucer is nominally 100 by 100, but you can see how oval that turned out. So in the Z direction, it actually grew by 2%, and in the XY direction it shrunk by five. You can also see that the saucer is now warped, which was kind of to be expected, considering that it's just two, three millimeters thick. It is a very thin part, and the warp can be explained very easily by the fact that this is a, a much larger surface, a much more, more even surface, and there are ridges back here that are just gonna flatten out a bit more uh, than this front surface. So this is kind of warped. It's still very functional. The cup is also not perfectly round anymore. It's, it's kind of indented here, but 
Overall, it is fine for what this thing is. If these were parts that would need to be mechanically accurate, uh, I would for sure either try to print them solid, which is something I'll try out, uh, or do other things like embed them in sand so that the sand is actually keeping the parts in place while they heat treat and allows for a more even temperature application. For now, let's make some coffee, shall we? some good coffee. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe even learned something. Uh, I certainly had a lot of fun making this. I always enjoy having a practical part in the end. And in fact, I'm actually pretty happy with the way this thing turned out on the look side. You know, black espresso cups. Again, thank you to Trade Coffee for sponsoring this video. Uh, remember to check out the link in the video description below and use code thoms 3 d to get 50% off your first order. I'm certainly gonna ask them to send me some more coffee after this. Um, in the video description below, you can also find links to the parts we used, for example, the HDPLA and the Prusa printers, but I'm, I'm sure you know where to find those. As always, if you enjoyed the video, you should probably consider subscribing and also hitting that bell so you actually get notified when new videos go up. Um, if you wanna support this channel directly, head over to Patreon, which side? That side, Patreon's here, but also just sharing this video or watching some of my other videos helps out a ton. So again, thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.